in Bruges. I, you know, I don't like that title because it's not like somebody trying to say it while they're vomiting or something. In Bruges. Before, it's, man, it's Belgium. You know, that's not, that's they, they that's speak even French. Worse. I, when I saw the title, I thought it was going to be like another Diving Bell in the Butterfly or something. I was like, oh, great, another movie some, about some guy dying somewhere slowly with like artistic lighting. No, they well, die quick in this dying movie. and just not it slowly. Yeah, they die very quick in this movie. But it's uh, I'll tell you what, it's a better movie than I thought it would be. And I'm just going by the poster. <laughs> I didn't see the trailer. You know, I, I saw the trailer and it, it, yeah, it is a better movie than I thought it would be. I mean, it, it looks like a, you see the trailer, you think, oh, it's a madcap hitman comedy. Yeah. And God was, damn, I'm sick of these. I'm like, you yeah. know what? Um, shoot them up was like the last word in all this. I don't need to see no more. But the movie actually. <coughs> damn, you all right? Talk, <coughs> talking about Don slowly, Cyrus. Yeah, right? <laughs> Do it over here, Leon. The, the, the movie is actually written with, with more heart than I expected it to. It, you know, it, it's got some depth to it. It, it kind of goes to some places you don't expect. It slows down so you get to know the characters. Um, I'm not crazy about the end of it, but everything else I actually like more than I expected to. Yeah, it's. Uh, I like Colin Farrell more than I thought I would in this movie, and I'm glad that he did this. Yeah. This is, this is, of course, it's a more independent film, so Colin Farrell actually has a chance now to. You were saying that earlier, and I, I did finally see the trailer, and it just looked like Colin Farrell playing Colin Farrell, like no. we always see him. And what was so good about his performance? No, he's, he's actually not playing Colin Farrell. He's playing a guy who's well, okay, he's very immature. I know that that, that plays right into like, how's that not Colin Farrell? Check one. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's a. Uh, He's he he really is a character. He's not a Colin Farrell you've seen before. I mean, you can imagine this guy. You can almost imagine a younger actor playing this role. And it almost would have been better for me if it hadn't been Colin Farrell. Somebody hadn't seen, so I could just like map that personality. But Colin Farrell comes with all his baggage, and it's hard to get past that Colin Farrellness. But to his credit, he does act past that. You see him as somebody completely different. Okay. In in this movie, he's. Uh, Picking up girls, I mean, well, check two. So you Damn. know, he really is playing Colin Farrell. So, but he's not, bitter from the streets and has an alcohol problem. He I, no, he's, no, he, he doesn't have an alcohol problem. He has some sort of problem he, though that messes. with I think his he career, drank off right? camera and we didn't see those parts. So I think he, he looked like he stumbled a little bit. Basically, on his first shot as as a hitman, he does his job, but he also does something very oh, heinous. Oh wait, he's a hitman. Check three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he does. Yeah, he on his first job, he botches it up. He accidentally kills someone he shouldn't. It's heavy on his conscience, and his partner begins to grow a little bit worried about him. Meanwhile, their boss, who I won't reveal who's playing him, uh, is very upset about this botched job and eventually wants to have him killed. So, so a, a hitman accidentally kills an innocent person, and the whole movie revolves around them feeling guilty about it. In, what a strange culture we live in. I know you, that's what you see. That's what the, you go by the trailer. Now, me looking at the poster, I just read the tagline and saw them holding up a bunch of guns. And I'm thinking, OK, this is going to be some guy rich and knockoff shit. Exactly. But it but actually the movie is a little more well written than I thought, because for one thing, there's a there's a lot of good line in this. There's a lot of good lines in this movie. The dialogue is actually really good. And I guess that's what makes Colin Farrell probably very good in his role because the writing for his character is very good. I mean, he's just a cocky guy who who's very irresponsible, and when and we're supposed to kind of not like him. I mean, he's he's almost he's that guy who says all the most offensive things, but he's not racist as much as he think thinks he is. He's not as sexist as he thinks he is. He's just a guy who has no filter on his mouth. Yeah, that, that that's very true. I mean, the the longer he goes, the more you go like, you know what? I really do like this guy. I mean, he's he's got a good heart, you know. Don't know how he got into this situation, but you know, he he seems like like a decent enough guy if you spent time with him. And that's the thing, yeah. He's like that drinking buddy you want to hang out with. At first, you you know, you've all had that friend that they brought up around, and they're like, man, don't bring that asshole around them. I don't like him. But when they bring him around a second or third time, you be like, you know, you know, you know what? what? Yeah. After I had a beer yeah. or two with him, I like him. You yeah. still wouldn't move in with the guy, but you know. No, no, but but you don't mind drinking with him. He's like, you know what? He actually says some funny things. Like once you get used to him, yeah. you like him a whole lot. I hear that. But it, it's it's a very indie movie, which it doesn't seem like it's going to be at first, and just like it, it has little minute twists and turns that you don't expect it's got a every scene there's a midget in this movie who's not peter dinklage well i guess it's a dwarf who's not peter dinklage and every scene with this with this with this dwarf is hilarious oh yeah they got like uh i, I won't even reveal what it is about this dwarf but the more at first you think like oh there's a dwarf he's cool and for all you people out there who don't know uh the, 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 they like to be called dwarfs they, they we call them midgets they're the little people with the big heads well, 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 mid, mid, midgets things. and dwarfs are not the same thing. Uh, no yeah. no midgets are the, the, the a little lesson in midgets and dwarfs right here midgets are the people who are well proportioned and dwarfs, dwarfs are the have ones sex with sleeping woman 
<laughs> Dor- with, with Dor- yeah. Dor- 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 Dorks have, have normal sized heads and little bodies. And huge yeah. beards. Yeah, and they hang out with, uh, yeah, exactly. They <laughs> mine diamonds. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, no, and so, yeah, they, they have a dwarf in here, the normal size, size head guy with a little body. And that dude, he is, man, the more you learn about that guy, he ends up being a bigger asshole than anybody in this movie. He's he always walking around, like, getting slapped by the woman going, hey-ho. Oh, oh, and this is, hey, Cyrus, here's something you would love. The love interest in this movie is Fleur Delacroix. Who is that? Who is that? From uh, Harry Potter. Oh, Yeah. I still don't know who yeah, that is. She is pretty good looking. She, yeah. was, um, she... she was the one who's the hot one who's crazy, right? What? The what? Blonde, little, isn't she the blonde girl? No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Exactly. I would like you. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I and, hope and, you're talking about an adult from that movie. No, no. In, in the fourth Harry Potter movie. Oh, they're wait, all adults When he's, when he's now, in, in, the, in the wizard tournament and, and he's, he's up against the Russian guy. And his, his oh, uh, yeah, other fellow Gryffindor. Yeah, the one who did She's the one from the other school. Oh, that chick? Yeah. Med C. How you say that chick's name? A Fleur Delacour. Okay, I ain't going to... Well, that's her character name. Fleur Delacour. De- yeah. Delacour. Okay, she's just going to be... Delacour? I can't I know. Delacour. She, you know what? She's just going to be that bitch from Harry Potter. Well, no, I know I know. she actually is like... There was a kind of how to do because she turned out she had done some soft core. Oh, so, really? Yeah, it's online. You can see it. I have. This may not surprise Excuse you. Excuse me. Could you point me out to the URL? <laughs> We're going to stop this review real quick. I'm going to get online, but uh, no. But uh, it's one of these things where he's he's... Colin Farrell is like, you know. Wait a minute, this movie just went up a notch knowing that. <laughs> well, she's not <laughs> naked in this movie. Actually. Now, who's the dude that. Brandon Gleason is basically. Brandon tall. Gleason. He's, he's awesome. sort of like his mentor. And he's told, hey, hey, you know what? You guys, you did this job. Now go to Bruges and, and wait for instructions. Where the fuck is Bruges anyway? Bruges is in no Belgium. Problem. Okay. And, and the thing about Bruges is like, it looks like a fairy tale town. Like every Grimm's fairy tale is based in a town like that. That shit that looks town. like a miniature golf course. It does. It totally does. <laughs> well, I've had Belgian ale and it does not surprise me at all their town would turn out that way because man, that shit fucks you up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Oh yeah. No, it's a, uh, and Brendan Gleeson is very good, man. Oh yeah. He's, he's always, he's always good. good. He's Brendan Gleeson. He's, yeah. he's a force in nature yeah. now who for those who don't know what is, we've all seen Brendan Gleeson I can't even remember well, what okay. movies he's been uh, in but. coincidentally Harry Potter he's played he's yeah. Mad-Eye Moody that's Harry right Potter. The that's General right. Uh, is my favorite yeah, movie yeah the General that's the first thing I saw him in yeah. um, he's uh, Beowulf's second in command yeah, yeah. um Golly, what that's else? the best stuff off the top of the head. Yeah, but, so those, those are the first things I can think of. He's been in so much stuff. He's like one of those guys that once you know who he is, you, you see him everywhere. But see, know? this is the movie. This, these two guys, man, you look at them and they don't play up that hitman stuff as much as you think they do. And that's what makes this movie. Brendan Gleeson's character is a real soft-spoken guy, likes culture, hardly pulls his gun. I mean, I don't even, I don't, they, through most of the movie, you never see him pull a gun. And uh, uh, Colin Farrell, he's just, he, he's really an inexperienced student. And most of the time, you're just kind of charmed by his inexperience. And also the fact that, like I said, he just doesn't know how to like uh, cut off uh, his filter when he's talking to people. Yeah, I mean, they're in Bruges, which to, to Colin Farrell is just like death. It's like, I hate this place. There's nothing to do. There's no pubs. There's nothing fun. And, um, you know, Brendan Gleeson's the whole time like, wait, man, just enjoy it for what it is. And the, yeah. and the culture and the history. And he's like, oh, fuck that. So this is like <laughs> the young John Travolta on his world trip, sort of, in Pulp Fiction. Uh, so, <laughs> I guess if you want to go there. He's not it. as goofy as that. Yeah, 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 he's not. I mean, it's funny because at first he seems like that. You're like, oh, this guy's just some young asshole. But as like, like I said, the longer it goes on, the more you really like his character. Yeah, and the th- and and I know you said you didn't like the ending the ending of the movie, but for me, this movie it it connects itself in a way. You've you've seen movies where they tie up everything, and they from the beginning they set the seeds the foreshadowing that would just tie up later on. And they do that with this movie, but you don't suspect it. They don't do it too heavy. And by the time the movie comes around, you recognize that, yeah, this is kind of mechanical, but it's a little more, it's a little more clever than movies that I've seen before that have done this. And I, it, it's, it's a little bit exaggerated, but I really like the way the movie cuts off right at the end too. I did like that. I, I did like where it cut off and it has a dark ending to it. Oh yeah. It's just, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's an ending that like I, I found I, I predicted way too early on. And it's just one of these, like, almost with any movie, the long, the closer it gets to the ending, the more it starts to narrow down the choices it can make. And it's just one, like, I, I think I know how this is going to end. And I'm like, this is probably the best way it could end from these choices, but I still wish it could have surprised me in some kind of way. It's just weird hearing you say that because, A, you usually love the dark endings. You usually True. really enjoy that. And, B, I know you like the abrupt, like, okay, it's done. Let's stop messing around. Let's not belabor the point and have a whole 10 minutes of, wasn't that fun? Yes, it was fun. Do I love you? <laughs> yeah. I love you type of Return of the King ending. 
<laughs> to, to get to this ending, something very implausible has to happen. Ah, oh, see, now there's the, Man, the killer for and you. For you Leon. know what I'm talking about? I don't want to ruin it. There's so much about this movie we're not seeing, which I, I let I me feel just bad. say I this. feel like we're ripping off the audience with that. But I, there, there's just like there's a character who does something, and it's like that dude would be not just dead. He would be splattered. He would be road. Okay, pizza. so yeah. the fact that he can talk and get a message over, and like no, a me- I'm sorry, yeah. No. A- imagine, <laughs> imagine if you took a a, a a, a meat patty, like a pile of hamburger meat, and threw it on the ground, and there was a pair of lips on it still talking. <laughs> and that's the thing that happens in this movie, and you're thinking, that really can't happen. And that really just kind of ruined the movie for me, just but, a tad. So the rest of the movie never had that kind of tone with people surviving ridiculous no. stuff. Look, you no, got no, movie no. violence, and then you got goddamn ridiculous. Okay. No, it went no. so it, far past it, anything it else. Did, it did. Everything else was very realistic, and that was like the thing where, like, as much as I like this movie right now and I want to give you leeway, I cannot give it to you on that. Yeah, exactly. I got to get a rule for the judges. The judges say no. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, exactly. You got, you got yeah. like, you got like a pile of raw you bloody hamburger. You got, you got like a pile of raw bloody hamburger meat on the table and it's looking at you and say, go on without me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd be like, uh-uh. You stuck the landing so the French judges still like you because, you know, isn't that just like life? Yes. Other than yeah. that. No, it's... Look, I will say I really did come out of the movie liking it a lot better than I really thought I would, even at the very beginning, because it did start out kind of silly. Just yeah, it did, it did. And and then as it went on, I was like, I this is very clever. I like this. I would I would give this a I'd give it a matinee. How about you? Uh, matinee also. Yeah, yeah. So I got to ask you though, no boobies at all, because it's like a foreign film, kind of. So you expect to see boobies. Like a likelihood of boobies increases. Yeah, it's it's a it's a foreign film with with Hollywood ish actors in it but it still took place in foreign lands and there was foreign producers yeah, and all that well so what you're telling me is no boobies no it's, a, it's not really much call for it either yeah i mean there is i they could have slipped it in now that i think about it it's right. got uh it's got midget boobies but they're on a man midget. Wait, wait, there's, there's, there's whores in the movie. Did they, either of them get naked? No. Nah. No, okay. No, that, no, they didn't. Because I was waiting. I that's was like, right. that's another notch down for that movie. You got prostitutes in a rated R movie in Belgium and they can't take, these hoes literally can't take their top off. <laughs> yeah. That's it's bullshit. They're not just being sexist. They really are hoes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not being sexist. These, this is one time I can use that word. <laughs> All right, I screwed up and said something I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, I can actually say hoes now without having Leon jump down in my throat about it, so... Uh, right, yeah, you didn't I didn't want to put hoes down Leon's throat. That's for sure. I'm put them down mine. I'm gonna be like hungry, hungry hippos with this. So. <laughs> there will be no putting I'd... Corey's hoes out there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wish y'all could see this. If I'm gonna leave this as an audio, y'all, uh, Leon is sitting up here with some gum in his hand. Hey, <laughs> no. man, this, this is five gum. Hey, like. I've been chewing on this for 30 minutes, and it still has flavor. What, I, I thought like you meant like five costs five dollars, so you're not going to waste any oh, bit of this. No. <laughs> I said new gum they sell at the store was like three bucks for five pieces, you know. What? You know what I'm talking about. They you got know, that attractive black pack with some of that bullshit. You know? ain't, no, ain't no five bucks for three pieces. Or three you know what? I wish they would do that. I'd buy it, ask for the manager, and slap the shit out of him <laughs> with it. Gum for three sl- do- Come on. Oh, oh, shit. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> now you've done it. <laughs> the gum police. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How dare you, sir? All right. I guess, are we done? I hope so, because I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Police knocking on my door. Nah, nah.